What's up guys? So I'm sitting outside just because I'm here with my doggy. Come here, baby, baby, come here. Okay, she doesn't want to say hi. But yeah, I'm outside and I just wanted to give a quick update on my little summer cut that obviously I've been on. And it's not going so well, to be honest. But um, there's a bright side to it. Okay, so just to make this as short as possible, I'm gonna go through a couple of updates and yeah. I'm about eight weeks into my cut, so I have four more weeks of this cut and I am realizing that I am not made for bikini competitions or anything of that sort because I suck at dieting. It's made me respect competitors a lot more now, like knowing how disciplined and strict they are with their diets because I sure as hell cannot do that, at least as of right now. Um, and it, it made me reconsider like wanting to compete in a bikini competition in the future just because dieting truly sucks. The last I weighed myself, I was about, I weighed myself on Friday, uh, which today is Sunday, so I was about 113 pounds. So I've only, and that was at the end of the day, so I've only lost about three pounds in eight weeks, which is absurd. And it's really frustrating and I've allowed myself to get really emotionally invested into this cut and um, it's kind of put me in a really negative space as far as body image and um, just mentally. And like I'm fine in general but it's just like the way that I feel about my body and the way I feel about my weight and the scale and things like that has changed dramatically. So the last couple of weeks I kind of took a break from being more strict with my diet and I took a break from stepping on the scale I didn't step on the scale for about two weeks just because I was getting so stressed out about the number um, which was never a problem before until I started cutting it's just because I've been re trying to reach a goal and not seeing results so that's what's upsetting about it and I know I look fine and things like that but it was just you know upsetting to see no progress and I think my body has kind of changed it's tightened up a little bit but not where I wanted it to be and I did want to be under 110 pounds at least but I'm not quite there yet and uh, as you guys know I did carb cycling I did that for about three weeks and I don't like it and I think it, it definitely would work it definitely does work and if you're actually disciplined and stick to what you plan out for the week then it will work However, I am not that disciplined and it was low carb days were too low carb, too low calorie for me that I would end up like pissed off and hungry and it would get to the point where I would like eat my meal and then literally right after or even like, you know, 30 minutes after my stomach would still be growling because I was so hungry and I was just like starving at the gym, starving all the time and it just was making me angry and hangry and tired so I, it's just not for me so what I would end up doing is like because I would be so hungry after a meal I would end up eating more because I was so hungry and I just wanted to give it a shot it didn't work for me so I'm not gonna do that Bambi is pooping so my plan as of right now with these four weeks remaining and I, I am telling myself this and I want to do it and I'm gonna try my hardest because I just I just want to challenge myself and stick to a goal and actually achieve it so with this four weeks I just want to kill it like just go as hard as I can eat as best as I can and stick to my macros it's temporary and I have a body that I want to achieve so it's like if I can get there and have the discipline to do it. I can't imagine how like proud of myself I'll feel. So that's the point I want to get to and that's the plan for June. Really focusing on my diet and sticking to what I calculate out. So I am tracking macros, just um, basically the same thing for seven days. And then I'll lower each week for four weeks. I want to focus on drinking my gallon every day and then um, getting enough sleep as well because that plays a huge role. And I don't want to focus too much on numbers or anything. I just want to look as good as I can. I am changing out my workout split. So basically, I still am having two leg days, one for quad, one for hams and glutes. 
and then I'll have a full back day, of course a rest day, um, and then I'll have two upper body days, and of course like my yoga flow and all that stuff. I do abs about two or three times a week, and when I do HIIT cardio, I do I incorporate an ab workout into that as well, and I do HIIT about two, and th two or three times a week. And then steady state cardio about every single day. <laughs> So it just depends. At the gym I really want to focus on quality over quantity, so that's what I've been doing this last week. I go, after work I go straight to the gym, which has saved me a lot of time, and then I just like focus really hard on my workout for like an hour and a half rather than two to three hours like I was doing. I think those are my main updates. I really just want to like enjoy myself too, you know what I'm saying? Not, not with eating, just in general, like I just really want to dedicate myself to something and like enjoy the process of doing this because it is pretty cool to watch your body change and you know learn things about yourself and just to push yourself and feel like a badass so that's the goal and if you guys want to join me please feel free to kill June and my birthday is in July so I'll definitely be eating a lot more but I my goal also is to avoid gaining so much weight during bulking season or just throughout winter and you know I do want to get under 110 in general just so I can get back to like a maintenance weight rather than a bulking weight. That's pretty much it. This video I share a review about uh, protein, Elevate Nutrition Protein. It's actually like my favorite protein of all time so I give a full review on that. I'm going to show you guys my meals for this coming week and that's basically it. So enjoy and I will see you guys in the next one. Oh yeah, and one more thing. I kind of have this large but reasonable and achievable goal. So I'm turning 25 in July and I want to reach 25,000 YouTube subscribers by the time I turn 25. And I know that may seem like impossible, I'm only at like 5,000, but it is definitely possible and I have like 10 plus videos planned for this coming month and I would greatly appreciate if you guys would share my videos or just subscribe or help me out in any way. Yeah, that's just my little goal. I've been had that goal for like a couple of months. I, if you look in my room, I have 25 by 25 written on post-it notes around my room and that's just been something I wanted to like focus on and manifest into reality and my birthday is July 11th so I have like a month and a week to achieve that and I'm gonna try my hardest and I wasn't gonna announce this but a friend of mine was like why haven't you said that you know like why haven't I said it publicly on YouTube or Instagram or anything so here I am so yeah I definitely appreciate any support as far as that goes. Okay, now that's it. <laughs> Bye guys. Good morning. Um, it's early morning, it's like 5.15, so I'm gonna be a little quiet. I wanted to review this protein. I don't think I've ever heard of this brand, um, and I've definitely never seen it, um, like a plant-based one from this brand. So it's Elevate Plant-Based chocolate brownie and it was a bit expensive about $45 for this tub which is only 26 servings and the reviews were really good so I'm gonna give you my first opinion I'm going to put it in my oatmeal as well as just drink it so I'll give you two reviews um, what I do like about it is that the ingredients are pretty limited so um, there's not like stevia or sugar added or anything like that they use monk fruit extract in order to sweeten it which is a plus okay so here's how I add it to my oatmeal first of all this is the milk that I've been using um, I typically just use like unsweetened vanilla almond milk but this one is the protein so it's 10 grams extra of protein the goal with my breakfast lately has been to keep me as full as possible through the morning so that I don't need a snack and I just eat breakfast then lunch and then I have two snacks for when I get home and after the gym so and uh, dinner of course so 
I shake it first? Oh yeah, I didn't ever find a scoop. Crap. Very soft perfume. <laughs> Weird. All right, we're just gonna go with that. And we just shake it up. All right, so first, pour it in here. Wow, it's really thick. Okay. And then I'll just mix this real quick. I prefer my oatmeal to be warm, so we're gonna microwave it. Okay, sorry for you to microwave. I'm gonna try it just like this. Wow. That tastes it tastes like brownie batter, for real. Like, obviously not as sweet and rich, um, but it doesn't taste like just regular chocolate. Like, this tastes like a brownie. I like it. I like it a lot. It's very thick, so I would imagine this would be good, like, blended. Wow, that's super good, actually. Probably, like, the best vegan protein I've ever had. Let's try this out. You gotta get a little bit of everything. So we got the almond butter, the oats, and a banana. Let's see. It's good. Either way, it tastes really good. Um, I taste more of the brownie flavor when it's just fresh like that. I think it'd be best to like turn it into a milkshake, honestly. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stick to that protein for now because it's really good. That's my little review of Elevate Plant Based Protein, and I give that a 10 out of 10. Uh, I think it tastes great. I think it requires a little bit more shaking to mix it, but that's not a big deal. So. I'll link it down below. So I've got all of my veggies cut up and then I'm going to add green peas a little bit later on, but we're going to start making the soup. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil and start adding this in. This is about a can of Great Northern Beans and the other can I'm going to leave as full beans. So for this, I'm going to crush it up. Just because I want my soup to be a little bit chunky rather than like liquidy. Okay. All right, I'm going to be adding in fire roasted diced tomatoes. low sodium vegetable broth. Gonna just dump this whole thing in. Give that a good stir and we want to wait until this comes to a boil before adding anything else. Okay now that this is boiling uh, I've decided I wanted to add some wild rice to it so there's not much left in here so I'm just gonna add that. Just a little filler. Adding some frozen green peas. Then these mashed beans. And the whole beans. going to add some random spices. Of course, we got to add pepper, do some garlic salt, a little bit of crushed red pepper, some turmeric just for its health benefits. 
dried basil. And we'll do some chili powder, just a little bit. We don't want it too spicy. All right, stir this all up. And then again, bring this to a boil. And we gotta make sure that rice cooks all the way through, but that's basically it. For my lunch, I'm gonna prepare these teriyaki vegan chicken strips from Gardein. And I wish, I wish that I got the Beyond Meat brand, now that I think about it, but these are pretty good too. So they're not really teriyaki. Um, it just comes with a teriyaki sauce, which I always end up throwing away because I never eat this. But they just look like that. We're going to toss this on. The bread I'll be using are these little... Smart Pockets by Tufayan Bakeries. This is the everything. They also had a whole wheat option. These are 80 calories each. 5 grams of protein. I think 15 grams of carb each. Yeah, those are the macros. Not too bad. So I'm going to be having two. Alright, bear with me with the mess. So I've just got a little bit of arugula here. Maybe like a cup. And I made a dressing. So this is Dijon mustard, olive oil, apple cider vinegar, some salt, pepper, red pepper flakes, and I put lime juice, it should be lemon juice, but I did not buy any. So we're just going to sprinkle a little bit on here, and just toss this. So it gets coated like so. All right, now we're gonna make our little sandwich. So I toasted these up for a few minutes and I'm just gonna go ahead and add in a few tomatoes to eat. And then we're gonna take our little arugula and stuff it inside of there. And, all right, this is a little challenging. Of course, our little veggie meat here. I'm a real professional here. Okay, and that's it. That's not too bad. We gotta, like, get the tomatoes to peek out a little bit. And then we got a decent... There you go. Okay, one more thing I'm going to do for food prepping this week. I soaked these strawberries in cold water and white vinegar. Uh, that's apparently supposed to help them from molding or stop them from molding so quickly. So I'm going to drain this and chop it up.